Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie Danis of Capital Athletics. This is part one of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. And joining me now, the head coach of the Capital Men's Basketball Program, head coach Dan Goodwin. Uh, coach, this year we have seen the first college football playoff. It looks like a major spectacle. I was watching Media Day a couple days ago, and it took on like a Super Bowl type of atmosphere. The game it was across so many platforms via ESPN. What do you make of all the hoopla with the first college football playoff? Well, I think it's a great thing. I, I truly do. I, 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 uh, I'm a big football fan like most other people are. watch all the bowl games, as many as I can, at least during the season. And I think it's great that we now have a true champion at the Division One football level. It's been that way for, uh, I believe, all the other sports in the NCAA, and I'm glad to see it happen. There has been talk that in future years we might expand the field, yeah, kind of like what has happened with the NCAA tournament with men's and women's basketball. They're talking about expanding from four teams to six teams uh, to possibly eight teams. But I thought head coach uh, Ohio State head coach Urban Meyer brought up a really good point. Adding those games would add more wear and tear to a player's body. They're already playing enough games uh, as it is. When is too many games? When is it too many games? Well, I, I don't know at that level. I'm not a football coach, obviously. Um, I, I did hear what Urban Meyer said about 85 to back to 110 scholarships. That does send, make somewhat sense to me as, as being a coach. Um, you're also talking about extending the game probably into February or extending the season into February, uh, which does encompass two, two semesters uh, academically then. and. And I think all of those are issues that would be tough. I, I really do. I, I think football is one of those games um, that I don't think you necessarily have to expand to 16 to, to get a true national champion. I think in basketball, you know, there, there's more of a chance of some upsets than maybe there are in football. So I, I think four is great. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Again, I don't pay that much attention to it, but a five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, from my understanding, I'm not sure those teams would be able to compete with one, two, three, and four in a two-game stretch right now, or a three-game stretch would be in that. Um, so I think four is a great start. I think it probably should stay there. That would be my own opinion. And but I think the excitement about the game is is uh, great for college football. Let's focus now on the NCAA basketball tournament. As I mentioned, it's been increased in recent years. It used to be the field of 64. Now it's the field of 68. Uh, a lot of people have said that if you add more teams, it kind of waters down the field a little bit. It kind of takes the fun out of uh, March uh, Madness. I'm interested in getting your thoughts, uh, obviously, because uh, you go through an NCAA tournament, the type of thing when the team uh, makes the uh, field. Well, it used to actually be smaller than that. It used to only be 32. Um, I think before that it was 16. When I was playing, it was like 48, 50, 51 in there. So it, it has dramatically expanded over the year. I, I like where it's at right now. I, I don't think, uh, and again, I go back to the same point that I made for football. Uh, if you've got 68, 64 teams in, I think VCU, you know, a couple years ago played in that first four and went to the final four. Um, so obviously they were competing for it. Um, but but. Can, can real, realistically the 90th ranked team in the, the country compete at that level for more than one, you know, multiple games? I think that's a stretch. Um, I, I think where they're at right now at 68, I believe, is, is a pretty good number. It allows some teams to get in uh, um, that, that wouldn't be able to play against those teams in regular season, but, but yet you have to earn it in a lot of ways. So I, I think it's a great number to be at. Earlier this season, we got to know Damon Goodwin, the coach. Damon Goodwin, the former player at UD. Uh, you also spent some time in the NBA as well, a little bit with the Phoenix Suns before you went into coaching. I want to learn about Damon Goodwin, the sports fan. You already mentioned that you're a football fan. What other, what other sports do you enjoy watching? Well, I grew up in a very small town. We played them all. You know, we had baseball, football, basketball. Every, every kid that went to the school played all those three sports. And I swam in the summers. I still swim today. It's, that's my exercise in the mornings when I can fit it in as I swim. So uh, I'm a big sports fan. I've always been, grew up being a football fan, wanted to play football when I was young. And uh, things changed in high school. So uh, my, my, uh, boy, my boys and I play a lot of golf now. So uh, very big sports fan. We watch them all. Uh, we try to enjoy them all. And, and uh, um, you know, we're just a sports family. Did you have any favorite teams growing up? 
Yeah, I like the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, that was one of my favorites. Uh, I, I just liked their players when I was when I was young. And Willie Stargell, the, Roberto the, Clemente, we are family. Guys, all those guys, yeah. I just liked their players, and I thought that was a, a neat team. I liked a, uh, a Los Angeles Rams at that time because they had a quarterback named Roman Gabriel, who I thought was, uh, I read a book about him when I was young. And You know, when you're a kid, you read books and you you uh, uh, try to figure out who you want to emulate and watch and all that. So uh, it's kind of across the board, but uh, we, you know, we just we just watch a lot of sports and enjoy it. What other athletes uh, did you look up to when you were a kid, or even coaches for that matter? Well, well, I, you know, as a young kid, I, we had a, a high school coach uh, named Skip Skip Bachman that also coached my dad and coached me, and he had been there for 38 years. It was a big thing growing up to be in his his program, and and one of the reasons I went to Dayton was because the Dayton Flyer games were on TV when I was growing up in my hometown, and and uh, Coach Donner at uh, the old former coach at Dayton would be one of those guys I looked up to as well. So now let's uh, talk about uh, how your team is doing. It's been it's been a recent rough stretch. Four sure. straight losses. You've sure. lost five out of the last six. Coming off of a frustrating loss against mm -hmm. Otterbein. Uh, let me ask the same question I asked you, uh, Charles English. What's the most uh, frustrating uh, aspect about this recent stretch? We're just not playing very well. We, we, we don't have a lot of good things going right now. We're turning the ball over. Uh, the first two possessions of our last game, we turned the ball over. It was the starting of it. And then we just, uh, we are not playing the way we're capable of playing right now. And, and uh, we're not playing the way that, that I expect or our team expects or alumni expects us to play. So. We're trying to do what we can in practice and, and uh, get that straightened out. It's a long season. Uh, we've had a very tough stretch. It's probably one of the toughest seasons um, that I've had in quite some time, to, to tell you the truth. Uh, doesn't mean we're going to quit on it. We're going to keep trying. We're going to keep working and hopefully get this thing straightened out. Coaches sometimes come to the point in the season where you have to kind of build up the confidence of your team. It's not just necessarily that they're hitting jumpers or getting rebounds mm -hmm. or something like that. They just need to get that focus back, sure. that confidence back uh, going forward. Have you had to have done that within the last couple yeah, I've of days? Talked to, yeah, you, you talk to a couple kids on the, on the bus on the way home and you, and you have kids come in the office and talk. But, you know, bottom line is that that's part of their responsibility as well. If they're not shooting the ball, then they need to get in the gym and get some shots up. If they're not, you know, if they're not playing defense in a practice situation, they really need to concentrate on that and, and become a better defensive player. And, and those are things we haven't done to this point. And, and I, I know we've had some guys uh, that have come in extra in the last couple of days to get some things in. It's good to see. You know, I, I wish that would have happened early in the season. Um, but we're taking steps in the right direction. We'll come out and we'll fight and we'll compete. We're going to be talking with one of your junior guards, uh, Charles English, in part two of the podcast, 11 and a half points per game. What's been the biggest improvement that he's made from his sophomore year to now his junior year? Uh, by far his mentality. Chuck has always been a, a very good athlete. He, he really has. He played varsity as a freshman somewhat, uh, played a little bit last year, uh, really uh, could have played earlier, but his mentality has really changed this year, and he's really been more focused and has, has listened better, has done what the coaching staff has asked, and has been a, a very good and very consistent player for us this year. I think from, from Charles' standpoint, we're getting out of him uh, very much what we expected from a statistical standpoint. And, and as he grows and gets older, um, you know, we expect him to become more of a leader as well. All right, Coach, before we let you out of here, we always end every interview with the random question of the week. Uh, today's random question of the week, if you were not a basketball coach, what profession uh, would you be in? Ooh, uh, probably something in finance. I've always had an interest. I, I read um, a lot of financial news and all that kind of a stuff. A math guy? Uh, not, not really a math guy. I think the competition of uh, my, my other opportunity. I was a marketing major okay. in college. My other opportunities out of college were were uh, going into uh, being a broker or selling stocks and all those type of things. And I, I think the competition of that um, you know, I was going to have winners and losers in the stock market. You know, that's something that, that attracts me, and, and to this day, I still try to keep up with it, read about it, and all that kind of stuff. So, Damon Goodwin on Wall Street. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but, uh, that, that was probably my other interest at the time. All right, Hector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was that coach Damon Goodwin joining us here on the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast Part 1. Coming up, we'll be talking with Charles English on Part 2 of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. For Capital Athletics, I'm Charlie Daines. We'll see you next time. Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie Daines of Capital Athletics. This is Part 2 of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. And joining me now 
the junior guard, Charles English. Charles, thanks so much for joining us here today. I gotta tell you, that first name is awesome. Yeah. Uh, be, be, being, a Char <laughs> be, uh, being a Charles myself, uh, is that a family name by chance? I mean, my dad is Charles Jr., uh, Senior, so I'm Charles Jr. I'm Charles Wheaton Dance the Third. So hey, it's Charles is rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously, it's a, it's the Charles and Charles show today. So I, I got to ask you, how are you introduced to the game of basketball? I mean, I didn't start playing basketball until in the seventh grade. Uh, I always wanted to play when I was younger, but you know, my mom just I already played football and baseball, and my mom kind of did want me to get involved in the three sports, but. Just randomly say, hey, mom, will you let me play? Like, because I transferred schools to a grade school. I went from uh, OMS to Nativity, and they finally let me play. So, liked it. Were there any coaches or players that uh, introduced you to the game that really inspired you uh, during uh, uh, your time uh, down there in Cincinnati? Yeah, a guy back home named Sherman Anderson. He's from uh, the Bronx, actually. He was my trainer uh, starting in seventh grade. He kind of introduced me, like, to just, you know, the offense, the defense, like, how fun it can be. And, like, it kind of took my mind off other things as well. I guess like basketball, I guess was an outlet for me, and he kind of made me like realize that. So, what other sports did you play in high school by chance? Uh, football and basket and baseball. And obviously, basketball is your favorite sport. Yes. Uh, what are some of your biggest memories of playing your high school ball at St. X in Cincinnati? Uh, the games against Moeller, uh, by far. I mean, it was always like very intense. You know, we hated Moeller. Moeller hated us. It was just always fun to be in that type of atmosphere. That Catholic uh, type yep. of circle along with Elder as well yep. down Cincinnati. You and I were talking before the interview. Uh, of course, you hail from the Queen City of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I don't think Cincinnati gets its proper due as a basketball hotbed. You have the colleges such as Xavier mm -hmm. and Cincinnati. You and I were talking about the Bob Huggins days, of course, with the Bearcats. But the high school ball is also very, very competitive down there, particularly with schools like St. Xavier, Archbishop Moeller, right. Cincinnati Elder. Can you talk a little bit about basketball in Cincinnati? Uh, I mean, basketball in Cincinnati is, is kind of weird, you know, because football kind of shadows it more. You know, football, everybody knows St. X football, you know, Moeller football. But basketball, like, we have a lot of athletes that just really, I guess, don't get discovered, in my opinion. But as far as basketball is concerned, I mean, it's always a great atmosphere being in Cincinnati, playing high school ball in Cincinnati. It's always been fun. Okay, so you're a Southwest Ohio kid. What made you want to make the move to Central Ohio to Capital? Like, I knew I wanted to go away from home, but I didn't want to go too far. And uh, looking at Capital, you know, I was able to come see Capital play against Heidelberg and watch, you know, Kelly Winters and Michael Summer and them. And then talking to Coach Goodwin just maybe uh, really made Capital feel like the place to be. What's it like playing for Coach Goodwin? It's a challenge. Like it really is. He pushes you like to be the best you can be like every second of practice, every second in the game. But it's always fun at the end of the day. Like you know at the end of the day that you got better like as a person and as a player. What do you like most about Capital the school? The people. Uh, everybody's welcoming and like there's a lot of, you know, different circles that people talk about as clicks. Like at Capital there's nothing like that. Like you can hang out with anybody you want and be accepted in any group. I see the common hashtag Cap fam, mm -hmm. is that uh, prevalent not just around uh, with the athletes but also with the student body as a well? whole? It's with the student body as well. You know, people, we're all connected. You know, being a crusader, no matter if we play sports or if we don't, like everybody gets that sense of family, and that's always been like a warming thing to have around. This is junior guard Charles English joining us here on part two of the Capital Mass Basketball Podcast. And I'm Charlie Dance. It's been a rough stretch for you guys as of late. You lost four straight, five to six, a frustrating loss recently against Otterbein. What's been the most frustrating part about this recent stretch? The most frustrating thing is knowing that, I mean, nobody likes to lose, but we all are given everything that we have. And we just got to keep fighting and come up with the right solution, you know, to, I guess, make that one extra pass or that one extra decision, you know, to change the L into a W. I mean, but, you know, we're just, just a work in progress. We're just working hard and trying to figure things out. Are there any specific areas that need to improve going forward? Definitely, I would say our three-point shooting uh, is it's pretty bad. I mean, for myself as well included. I mean, we just got to really, you know, focus more on taking the right shot and not necessarily tough shots, I feel. And then I guess our shots will start falling for us more. So let's not talk about you as a student athlete. I saw that you are an economics major. Yes, what do you plan uh, to do after you get done here at Capital? Uh, my dream job has always been to be a financial advisor for, like, a corporation such as PG. Really? Okay. Why is that? I've just always known about PNG. Like my mom works Procter and Gamble, by the Procter, way. Procter, yes. Uh, my mom does a lot of things with PNG and with Southern Graphics, which is like a cylinder company. And I was just always fascinated by like the things she does and I kinda wanna 
be into that feel with her as far as P and G. Well, there you go. There you go. We like to always end our interviews with the random question of the week, uh, Charles. Uh, here, here's this week's random question of the week. Uh, what is your favorite animal, if you had to pick one? Oh, the guys are going to hate me for this. <laughs> My favorite animal is a penguin. Really? I love them. Why is that? They're just so, like, chubby and short and... Now, was it because of the movie Happy Feet, or was this well before? I do like Happy Feet. <laughs> We're so like, shaming it. It's a great movie. I do like Happy Feet. Yeah, I love that movie. And We're all like, young at heart. We can we, we we watch films like that. <laughs> yes, we are. I just love penguins for some reason. All right, cool. Well, Charles, thanks so much for joining us today. today. <laughs> that was junior guard Charles English joining us here on part two of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. For Capital Athletics, I'm Charlie Danis. We'll see you next time. <laughs>